we started the planning for the event last year in September with a big kickoff telephone conference to really get the key persons together and to talk about what kind of innovations, what kind of technologies uh, do we really want to position here at a Continental Tech Show. 150 experts were in stock. They really explained the technologies either in the demonstration vehicles or in the topic islands. We showed about 40 uh, innovative technologies. Uh, we had about 33 cars in place really to demonstrate and give a live demonstration of the technologies, really to foster the dialogue with the international media, the international journalists. We want to position Continental as one, uh, a very strong partner in the automotive industry. For that, we are of course exhibiting and displaying a number of highlight technologies, be it from a pre-development point of view, or from a development status, or from a state-of-the-art in series product perspective. So we really want to use such an event to address highlights and innovations coming from Continental. It's a pleasure to give you a uh, short insight into uh, our company, what we are expecting technology-wise in the next but also mid-term future. At this year's Continental Tech Show, we are showing the best technologies of uh, two worlds, of the combustion world and of the electrification world. And namely, these are turbochargers for the combustion world. Here we have two types. One is the conventional steel turbocharger and the very new aluminum housing turbocharger. And on the electrification side, we cover basically the full range from 48 volt mild hybrid technology up to an electric e-axle drive for pure electric vehicles. We have uh, two new members of the 48 volt mild hybrid technology. The first one is the so-called connected energy management. That means that we uh, consider navigation data as well as online data about the traffic situation, about dynamic speed limits, to make an optimized use of the recuperated energy. So we have now recuperation of energy inside the 48 volt battery. With this system we make an optimal use of this energy because we have predictive energy management, so we look a little bit ahead what's going on on the road layout, is it going uphill, downhill, do we have any traffic lights, do we have any speed limits, and with this we can do an optimized driving strategy. What is important that we distill it down to uh, subsystems, components, and also uh, focus on the areas of uh, software and systems where we can make a mark and get sort of the best uh, technology, innovation and business opportunity. It's, not, it's easy to say, but hard to do. The Holistic HMI approach is an overarching approach where we consider user needs, his condition, his preferences, his current condition. Second, we consider the vehicle itself, so the position, the speed, the current maneuvers. And the third dimension is the environment, talking about other traffic members, the infrastructure, and this is the key that we really adapt information according to the situation, according to the driver's needs. The benefit of the holistic HMI approach is on the one hand that we have an increase in safety of use and a inspiring driving experience. I think the most important thing for people is to have the right surrounding and the right leadership. We need inspiring leadership. This is our responsibility as management, as board, to give people, you know, so to the space that they can really use all their potentials and resources and creativity they have. Here we are presenting very important functional building blocks to achieve uh, vehicle automation. This means that on the one hand we have building blocks to enhance the environment representation of the vehicle. For example, we have a module that is called multimodal lane perception to enhance the quality of the information of the driving lanes the vehicle is driving in. 
Furthermore, we have the traffic light assist to enhance the data quality when it comes to driving in the inner city, which means that we can detect the traffic light phase and relate them to the individual lanes. On the other hand, we have building blocks that relate to vehicle safety. For example, the redundant brake system in case the uh, main brake fails that has to be backed We are sensing, for example, the state of the vehicle and we are sensing also the surrounding of the vehicle. Therefore, we have some products here in the Topic Island, for example, wheel speed sensors, radar, camera or LiDAR sensors. And they are giving us a multitude of information to realize a planning. Therefore, we have certain control units, for example, airbag control units and also a chassis domain control unit. When we receive those informations, we are planning what we will do. And this is the third step, the act part. We will brake, or maybe we will accelerate, or we will steer. One innovation we have here is the world's first plastic transmission cross beams for rear axles. Currently it is used in the Mercedes S-Class. Regarding compared to die cast aluminium versions, it is up to 25% lighter. One highlight we have also here is um, the interior material from Benek Calico. It is called Novelis. It's really a world premiere we have here. It is a real alternative to real leather. That means um, it is not only as soft as real leather, but it also looks like real leather. So we as a technology leader in rubber and plastics technology combine our forces, for example, in the field energy efficiency and lightweight. We have here a comparison between the Premium Contact 5 and we compare it to the Premium Contact. The Premium Contact was developed 10-15 years ago and here you are able to drive both tires directly against each other. The difference is in the technology. In the Premium Contact you have the technology level from 10-15 years ago, whereas the Premium Contact 5 has today's technology level. Comparing an old car with a new product versus a new car with an old product is not a common exercise, so it is new for everybody. And the message is clear in the end. The tire is really deciding about the performance, especially regarding grip on wet roads. And the premium tire is the most important assistance system in this regard. So they take with them that they need to make their mind up about the performance of tires more than in the past. Five years ago, the expectation was that the pure electric vehicle will grow faster than other segments in this area. 2011, we have introduced a Conti e-contact version already. Two years later, the view was a different one, expecting hybrid vehicles to grow further. And therefore, we had to adapt to hit the requirement level for this car and tire segment. We have two strong, strong trends for the tire development right now. The one part is reducing CO2 emissions, means better rolling resistance. On the other hand, the ever-increasing demands for higher safety, in particular as well the advanced driver assistance systems, the tire which transfers and transmits all the forces to the road is getting even more exposed than before. To get those two conflicts on a higher level, this is the biggest challenge and trend which we see right now and for the near future in the tire industry. <laughs>